All right, smiley faces. Ah, energy. Born free, as free as the wind blows. Hey guys, welcome back to the show with me and Velociraptor. The show is still nameless, but next week it won't be. We have got three names, boiled it down to three. I can't believe how amazing all the entrances were. Like, they're just crazy. I might have to tweet it out in a, in a twit longer or something like that because they're like super fun. It's crazy creative. So thank you so much. But we've got three that we want you to vote on. Uh, the first one... <laughs> The first one is the Nameless Fighting Game Show, because for some reason people are kind of starting to enjoy that. The have, we, have we let it go on too long? And yeah, we just did. Gonna, we, we, just went, been... <laughs> we went on way too long. We left that for too long. We're so disorganized. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, but then we have two really clever ones. Uh, one is Much Hadoo About Nothing, which I thought was pretty cool. That's actually that's your favorite, right? As a writer... I got to give it to the Shakespeare reference. So, yeah, I think that's my favorite. <laughs> so that comes from, I don't know how to say the name exactly, but I think it's Fuse GT. Um, and then the one that I like uh, is Focus a Chat. <laughs> so I can't even say it with a straight face. Focus a Chat. <laughs> Focus a <laughs> Chat. So, so you know, I kind of like that one. That's by Dove it Jones. It works when you think about it for a second, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's by Dove Jones. It harks back to Street Fighter 4, so I don't know if it will win or not. Um, but we're going to put the three names down in the comments, and you just have to vote by liking them, and the one with the most likes will win. Uh, I guess I would say that we should close the voting by the end of Monday night. Monday, yeah. The end of Monday's Monday, good. right? All right, end of Monday, East Coast time. So, that's when I'm going to do it. Right. Uh, you want to tell us what we're talking about today, John? Yeah. So, uh, gosh, a lot's been happening. Well, you went to final round last week, so we kind of we kind of didn't. You know, you did a whole bunch of really cool interviews and whatnot, uh, but we didn't really get to do the show per se. Uh, but uh, actually, that's what we're going to talk about: is the the tournament circuit for Street Fighter Five in 2017 has kicked off, and uh, you know. We got the season two update. People were eh about it. There've obviously been complaints about the game. Uh, people have been ready to to, to fire um, straight at Capcom, straight at Street Fighter Five, straight at the Pro Tour. But you know, final round um, played out. I guess it was almost two weeks ago now. And we've also had um, uh, what was it? Fighters Underground SXWX or <laughs> whatever yeah. the uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and. And these tournaments that have kicked off 2017 have actually been not that bad. I dare say they've actually been successes on um, multiple different fronts. And I think it's been a very good thing for Street Fighter V, for the Pro Tour, and for the Street Fighter community. Um, so I think that's what we should talk about today. All right, cool. I think I think there was a bet or something. I feel like somebody won a bet. Somebody I, don't, I, don't, I don't keep up with you know, things like that. Know? All right, cool, cool. Yeah. I, just, no I was wondering if you knew about that. Uh, How much you gonna rub that one in, man? I already posted your your interview, which was great. Shout out to Shine. Uh, you to won shine. your bet, yeah. everyone. I got crap uh, in my the the event hub guys in like our Skype chat and everything were like, "Hey, rapper, so you lost the bet. Rapper's gonna lose the bet." And it's like, this is so stupid. Whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But it's following me. No, it's not. Forever. It's not. It's not a big deal now. Yeah. No, I can <laughs> see. I can see how it wouldn't be a big deal anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it, yeah, it's 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 not it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Uh, all right, so yeah, final round. Um, you want to talk about like, I mean, yeah. Well, okay. So the first thing that everyone was expecting when we were heading into final round, first big premier event. Um, there would be a lot of competition there, and what we've all been talking about is the uh, what we've come to start calling the robbery character. Right, yeah. the characters that they, they pop their V trigger and then they win the round regardless mm -hmm. of where things are at. And everyone was like, "Well, it's going to be a big top eight of Balrogs, Loras, Urians, and maybe some Guiles." 
and we saw a Guile slash Mika from Knuckle Dew, and we saw a Laura from 801 Strider. Congrats, welcome back to yeah, the yeah. But welcome back to the to the spotlight there. And I so an amazing nearly play. did an interview with him. I so nearly did an interview with him, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work out. But Michael Martin managed to grab him. So if anyone wants to see that, they should head over to his channel and check that out. Absolutely. Um, but we didn't see a big Urian Valrog Laura fest in top eight, um, and and that was very refreshing. We saw the emergence of Ibuki from Shen, so he is no longer playing Fang tier characters like Fang. He's playing Ibuki, and now all of a sudden people are saying maybe she's the best in the game. Um, I like but, the way you said. I like the way you said Fang tier characters like Fang. Like there's any yeah. other Fang tier characters in the game. A joke. They're Fang man. Anyways, uh, <laughs> he uh, he won the whole thing with a buki. Not only was it refreshing, like I said, but it was fun to watch seeing yeah. a buki played at that level. Like I've I've been saying it since season one that she's secret really good, um, and then she got a little buffed in season two. She got the um, she got someone like Shen behind her, and now we're seeing her potential more and more. And uh, but it was very exciting to watch seeing his mix up, seeing him like use all the knives at one time for certain mix-ups and things like that. It was uh, it was fresh all around. Top 8 was very exciting, and it wasn't. Very, very importantly, it wasn't what the community kept saying it was going to be, what, what people were kind of expecting. Um, it was it was good um, all around. And the, and the tournament ran well. Final round last year didn't go as expected because uh, they had about a million more people than they, right. than they thought they were going to. And so, uh, like, there were a lot of eyes on final round as a tournament to see how um, how the uh, the runners were gonna were gonna handle things this time around, and that went well. I don't I don't know of any kind of hangups or anything like that. I, uh, yeah, but, I was just gonna say what was interesting about final round is um, people probably didn't really get a chance to see what it looked like when you were inside. You probably saw snippets of it. It, it looked like it, a convention center. Kind it of was thing, a like convention either. center. It was very much like. Evo, the first two days of Evo, which was in like this massive, what felt like an aircraft carrier, it you know, did. like it was, it was, it was very big, sterile, and, yeah, yeah, very big, sterile, concrete area, and it was like last year, it was in this like little room, which you know, like, and a thousand people turned up to Street Fighter Five. You and couldn't they, play pools; there were too many people. <laughs> but then this year, they like prepared for a thousand people, and like three hundred people turned up, right? Um, and so there was actually, it was really roomy. Like, there was a lot of room there. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on all over this big, big hall. Uh, but it was, it was very roomy. Uh, it was cool. I, I still prefer, um, in general, after the Evo experience, I still prefer the, the ball rooms because they just have a nice, nicer atmosphere to them. than yeah, the big carpet and, and it yeah, feels yeah, a little yeah. more, yeah, as yeah, opposed I, to, like, we're saying, the sterile concrete. It's a little sterile. But um, I think it was probably, I think the players would probably say it was run better this year they've always got complaints but um i think definitely better this year than last year uh mm -hmm. and very exciting tournament and i think i will say that i think the tournament was more exciting because of sien's ibuki uh and some of the dlc characters so you got taquito with akuma you've got mm -hmm. uh you had one of my favorite moments we'll talk about it a little later was christian christie's you know guile and knuckle Doo's guile uh these are all of the sort of like the DLC characters, particularly more recently and moving into season two, are characters that are a little bit more complex. They have a little bit more complexity to them and they're a little bit more interesting to watch. And I think that is the key difference. They're much more interesting to watch um, than, you know, like I'll throw Kami under the bus. I don't find Kami that interesting to watch. Uh, I'll throw Nikali under the bus. I know that's your character. Uh, I, he sorry, is sorry, very I don't straightforward. Think, I, don't, I can't. No. I, I just don't think he's that interesting to watch. Um, I think he's a really cool design, and I, and I think they could do things to these characters to make them more interesting to watch, for sure. Uh, Cammy's getting an air throw. I have no idea what impact that will have on like what she's like to watch her visually uh, and her play. Um, and she's getting buffed, but we'll talk about that in another video. Um, <laughs> there were there were eight Cammies in the, in the final 64 already, so I can't wait for her to get buffed. That would be great. Um, but I, I think... Uh, it's a testament to the direction that the characters are going in and the gameplay that it was more hype to watch. I think that's really what it boils down to. You've got to give Capcom their due when they deserve it, right? Yes. You know, that doesn't mean I don't still care about the million things that are at the top of Reddit, you know, in the list of 
things that need to be fixed about the actual at home experience. Um, but uh, in terms of a spectator, uh, you know, esport or whatever, you know, I hate the term esport. In terms of spectating, it was tremendously more exciting this this time around, I think. And, Sh- yeah. and Sien, Sien is like the best. He's like the coolest guy. He's just like, I, you know, who doesn't love Sien? He doesn't love the fact that it, it's kind of a great story, right? For somebody to be stick with Fang for so long and then eventually Capcom are like, we're going to nerf him so hard. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to force you to switch. And, um, they have an initiative just to get Sien to stop playing. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I don't know. So I was I was I was psyched for Sien, and um, yeah, I I uh, I think yeah, big takeaway absolutely was those two things we have talked about. One is much more exciting. Two was the characters that everybody thought were going to end up winning didn't win. And, and you know, as you talked about that, it sparked something for me uh, because we didn't see a ton of uh, the robbery characters in top eight. First of all. I still think they're a problem. I still think that they take the fun out of the game in certain ways. That's its own thing. Like you said, we can talk about them later. But I think that it's also a testament to how well-rounded most of the game is right now. Most of the characters, um, I mean, Street Fighter V has its identity. It's a high damage game, yada, yada, yes. But those characters are fun to watch. They're fun to play. And, and most of them are, are just fine. I don't think the game needs a ton of tweaking. I think we just have a few problem children that stick out more than everybody else does. But we saw a top eight widely without those characters, and it was great. And so I, I think that it, 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 it's worth saying that most of, the, most of the roster in Street Fighter V is pretty close to how it should be. And I don't think that gets acknowledged quite enough. I think at this point, I want to let everybody know that we are actually, if you are... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we like to have fun yeah I know I can tell it's amazing I wanted to just say to everybody right now that it looks like we may do another show tomorrow <laughs> mm. with a special guest and talk a little bit about the patch notes and uh, and some of those robbery characters and talk about it, yeah. in it, in it from a lot of different angles um, so I'm kind of excited about that so let's avoid that for now uh, were there any other takeaways so we had final round Success, robbery characters didn't win. Uh, Sien, excellent, we loved that. Uh, then we had South by Southwest, uh, Fires Underground, right? That, that was different. That was a very different format. It was like, a, it began as Topanga esque with these two groups of, I think it was eight people in each group. And then the top four of each of those made it onto the final bracket, and they were competing for $20,000. So it was very much another one of these esports-driven, um, uh, you know, outside company event coming in and throwing a Street Fighter V tournament. But uh, as an invitational, they brought a lot of the right people. It was very exciting to watch it. So with that one, um, but I, so it was best out of five, I think. And what I think the story of that one was kind of interesting, and that was the punk. I think Punk was sort of like the, the interesting story there in that he drove all the way through like seven people, right? In his group, like seven zero. He went seven zero. Yeah, in right? his first finish. And that was like, that wasn't, that was Momochi. That was Knuckle Dew. That right. was like RB. Yeah, it was, it was legitimate names. And he's and seven he, oh. He was a uh, king of New York. And again, it was seven zero. And everyone, you know, he, he, he won a couple of like majors, uh, what we would, used to call majors, I suppose. I don't really know what a major is anymore. Um, but, you know, like... And then Nakudu was... He beat Nakudu. Uh, so they are actually two for one now. Punk is 2-1 up against Nakudu. Nakudu actually said in my interview with him that he was excited to play him, wanted to play him at final round, didn't get to play him at final round. It was, you know, I think he was playing mind games. Was, you know, he was using my interview for mind games, which was, you know, I'm going to beat this kid 3-0. You know, I'm going to destroy him. And, and, of course, Punk beat him. Nakadu in the end uh, made it further in the tournament, both tournaments, right? Um, yeah. But uh, Punk, so once he yeah. made it out of his initial bracket, he lost to Justin Wright, which is a mirror. So you saw it's like, meh. Uh, but mirror matches don't really tell you who's the best. It's who it's everybody else that you play. You know, it's like yeah. mirror matches are always dodge, right? They're always a bit dodgy. So so like that mirror match, I think anybody could have won that, right? So okay, he lost. And it was three two. It was very close. It was three two. It was very close. 
But then he ran into <laughs> F Champ, right? And it was what three three zero or something. Three zero. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, it, <laughs> welcome to uh, you're gonna learn today, big leagues. It was. It was all of that. But right before that, Punk did have F Champ in his initial bracket, and he beat him. Oh, he did. So yeah. So, so they had played just. I, I think it was the day before, um, and and he won. I think it was three two. That was close. If uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but yeah, so that he he seven O's and then he goes to the next bracket with a lot of the same people and he goes on to. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. So maybe F Champ figured out punk. Oh, he would be one to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean he would, right? Player I mean, he is, yeah. Doesn't surprise me at all. So that's interesting. I wonder if we'll see that turn into a rivalry. Um I like the rivalry aspect. Um you know, uh I think there are different ways to do it, but uh, I particularly like the current young guys coming through. I just think it's new and exciting, because, you know, they're smug. I mean, they've, a couple of them have been around for a while. Punk hasn't, but, you know, they're smug and there's Knuckle Do, and I think that's sort of... Uh, they're, they're all kind of friendly, but they're, 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 they definitely are rivals, and mm. I think all three of them probably think they're the best, you know? And right can now, you, can you say that you're the best over Knuckle Dude, who's been as he's he's been the one most consistent in the in recent times? I but you think Smug and, and Punk? I mean, I guess those guys probably would think they're better, right? I think that. Well, I mean, if you were to go on the most recent results, right, season two, mm -hmm. and I agree with you, right? Knuckle Dude has has is by far like the most consistent out of all three. He's the guy who went to the Capcom Cup and won Capcom Cup first. Uh, is that the first American to do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, amazing. Um, incredible talent. Season two, right now, as it stands, it's very exciting. Like, that rivalry is very exciting because what you have is Punk is 2-1 up against uh, Nakadu, and then you've got Smug, who is, I believe, has beaten him a couple of times now. Well, he beat him twice. <laughs> it was great. They did a pre-match interview before those two met in winner's finals, and... Knuckle Dude talked a lot of smack. Smug ended up winning, and then they ended up playing again in grand finals, and Smug won again. So I don't know if that counts as two, but it I, seems Smug has Dude's number right now. I think so. I think so. So, and I'm not sure about Punk and Smug. So there's like this sort of triangle going on. <laughs> I think young very, whippersnappers in there. Yeah, their, I, think it's, I, think feuds. It's, I think it's very exciting. I like it. You could almost put on an exhibition just with those three and have like a first to ten between all three and see who came out on top. Oh, you um, got to throw K-Brad and, uh, and Wolfcrone in there too, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's like crazy thuggery. That's like, <laughs> That's like ridiculous thuggery. That's like That's like we're not sure if they're friends when the cameras turn off or yeah. not. A lot, of old school yeah. guys, a lot of old school guys love that stuff. So you've got two different types of thuggery going on there. Uh, or rivalry. Sorry, two different types of rivalry and one of them is definitely thuggery. Um, <laughs> so yeah, of course, that that was uh, another highlight from uh, Final Round, which I think people, you know, K-Brad's great with that sort of stuff. And, you, you know, if you've been paying attention online, you would know why or historically, you would know why that pop off was so so insane. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I the other thing I want to talk about uh, was just uh, I actually want to ask people who are watching uh, what was their personal favorite moment from final round, um, and then uh, I want to give you mine, and I want you to give me yours, and so we can end on that, and uh, That's good. and uh, and then. I'm, I'm going to be excited to see if people are going to leave links in the comments. I'd be quite excited to see people's favorite moments because I didn't get to watch all of it because I was just doing bloody interviews all the time. You were and, doing the Lord's work. It's appreciated. Well, I was doing interviews and then I was, and then I spent like the last week in a, you know, I haven't seen the sunshine. I've just been editing, you know, so and reading people's comments and stuff. So, um, again, I'll be reading people's comments, but I would like to see some awesome gameplay. Um, and winning stupid bets. And winning stupid bets. So why don't you start? Me? Okay. Uh, so as far as final round goes, first off, there were a ton of great moments. And it was exciting through and through. Day, day one was exciting. Um, top eight was amazing. Uh, and, I, and I want to give a special shout out to Shen for, for doing what he did, winning the whole thing. That's not really a moment. Um, but 
I'll still include Shen when he played Knuckle Dew, who is very famous for his teabagging ways. He uh, he pulls out his Ibuki, which everyone's really excited to see. And it's like, okay, Shen's Ibuki is up and coming. We know the caliber of player he is. Uh, he's here with this new uh, fully loaded character, and he's going up against the champ, Knuckle Dew. And they're facing off in uh, winners of top eight. And Shen hits Knuckle Dew, either stuns him or sets him up for, for a KO, and then he teabags Dew. That's big damage. Where are you going? Oh, oh! Big I think we need a match built for Phil. <laughs> we need to go to the camera. Oh! 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 I see you! Oh, see I see you! Wow! No table manners. No table manners on that man. He just left all the plates on the table. He walked away. Yes. And I thought that that was a great, that was entertainment. That's given all the stuff that, you know, it set that up with. That was awesome to see. And you're like, this is one high level play. It's fun to watch because these guys are great. But two, we're seeing their personalities more and more and more coming through. And that's what, that's what you're wanting as far as entertainment goes from these tournaments. And, and I thought that when I saw that, I go, this is good, clean family fun, plus teabagging. <laughs> and uh, it was good through and through. So that was my favorite moment. He, and he, uh, I think he, it was like total overkill as well. I think he threw a bomb and then, and then, uh, the, the, I don't yeah. know what that movie yeah. is, but like, it was, it was like teabag, bomb, boom. It was like everything, uh, which I thought was kind of cool, you know? Um, yeah. But... I gotta be honest. I just want to say one thing. I think teabagging is like the poor man's. I just, it's so. I wish we had more. And if you know, hopefully Capcom will work on this. But I wish we had proper taunts. Like Akuma's taunt is sick. It has a hitbox, and then you can combo it into all sorts of things, right? Um, so there's a lot of potential there for <laughs> for hashtag thuggery. I just think it would be better to have like better taunts. Um, <laughs> So my number one moment was uh, a little bit more uh, just me, I, I guess. Like it's not, I don't think it's a, it's for me because I'm an Akuma player um, and I interviewed Tito. Tito told me that Guile was, you know, going to be tough for him. And of course, Guile was tough for him. So what happened was he played Chris G in winners. Chris G knocks him into losers. Uh, and uh, towards the end, Chris G did like a, a crush counter, uh, which kind of led into... I don't want to say it's, well, it's kind of like a sequence, uh, but he, he hit his V trigger and, you know, yeah. basically ended ended Takeda. Back here so he can juggle. Yes, then the flash kick. Christian in such good positioning. Tokido in trouble now. Oh, and, and it did a Booms. What? Did you see the look on Christian's face? He was even surprised that he took out one of the top Japanese players. Uh, and then Takeda repaid him <laughs> in losers. You see them go back and forth. It's really close, really tight, and he just throws out this. He threw it out once, and he and he hit and he got blocked. The the standing fist, and he threw it out again. As as I don't know what Chris was doing, but he was coming forward. He was doing something. He pressed the button, and he just got bam. He just got hit by this crash counter, and then he went straight into the critical art. And I I, I thought it was really cool. He's got to be careful though. A low medium kick will be hit confirmed. No anti air, but the jump back. He's giving up all that Ooh. space. So much space is gone. No! Oh, the God! He? He's gone. He's yeah. gone. He's gone. The volcanic eruption took it. You know, respect to both players because it could have gone either way. Um, but, you know, I was happy to see an Akuma in top eight. I was happy. You know, it gives me hope. I think a lot of people, you know, you see Akuma and there's low health and, and without someone like Takedo leading the way, you know, you're not going to see a lot of Akumas. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to no, see a lot of Akumas. He's not easy to win with, especially at the high level. He is not easy. And it was, and I was actually, neither of us picked Takedo, remember? To be in yeah. top eight. Based on the fact that we felt that it was going to take time for, for Akuma to make, to, to get there. I can't so, believe you didn't, now that I, now that I realize how much of a Tokido slash Akuma fanboy you are, I can't believe you didn't go with your guy. I'm an idealist, so I should have, but uh, there's a bit of realist in me. And the realist in me told me, I, I know, I remember Akuma in Street Fighter 4. It took like, you know, it wasn't until 2012 when Infiltration won Evo and dominated that year. The And there were, you know, various iterations of Street Fighter. I don't even remember if that was, that might have been Super or I can't remember. But, um, but it took a while. 
it takes a, Akuma is a character that takes a while to master, you know? Um, and so I didn't think Takedo was going to make top eight. I honestly didn't. Uh, I'd seen him losing actually a lot online. Uh, and winning. But. Oh, did you see it? Did you see a specific video of Takedo losing recently online? <laughs> did it involve a Balrog player? Yeah, that okay. Well, that 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 will be our next video. Yeah, we will talk about this. That'll yeah. be our next video. That's a good 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 way to end the show because I think I think that's what we need to talk about tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So everybody out there, thank you for your support. Particularly if you, I mean, the support on the interviews has been amazing. Thank you for supporting the show. And go down into the comments and please vote for one of the three names, the Nameless Fighting Game Show, Much Haddo About Nothing, <laughs> and uh, Focus a Chat. And we'll see who wins that <laughs> by, uh, by uh, 12 a.m. Uh, Monday night, uh, East Coast time. So we'll say goodbye. Bye, guys. See you guys. Thank you.